and we will get this party underway. So again, my name is Crystal. I'm the Center for Academic Success or the Tutoring Center, Director at Los Angeles Pierce College. And I'm also a coordinator for 3CSN, that's the California Community College's Success Network, which is the amazing statewide professional learning organization um, that is dedicated to equity and success and also which hosts this awesome party that we get to throw every Friday at three o'clock uh, for learning assistance. Um, so we also have with us today Fatima Mamdani. She is a recent college graduate and for more economics tutor at Pierce College. She's going to be hosting with us today and Grace Lewis um, who is a sociology tutor and a tutor leader at Pierce College. And we also have with us in our post session, Mary Rangel, who is from Mount San Jacinto College, who's gonna show us some of her favorite icebreakers at the end. So we've all come together today to talk a little bit about how we can break ice and uh, create safer, more, in, more uh, richer spaces for our students in our peer educator sessions. Next slide. So the way this is gonna work is everybody's gonna start off muted, but we do want you to participate pretty actively. So do feel free to type in the chat, make the chat yours. We really want you to be throwing down your favorite icebreakers, telling each other what you think, answering each other's questions. That is a great space for us to build community. So use it. You got some reaction buttons, use those too. We love those. If you'd like to speak, um, then we're gonna just ask you to raise your Zoom hand and we'll show you how to do that in a second. If you can't figure that out, put a one in the chat and we have two chat monitors. We'll just be watching that chat and making sure that everybody gets recognized. Again, find those reaction buttons. You got like some happy faces in there. You got some laughy faces, you got some hearts. Those are real, also really fun ways to interact. So please do feel free to, to step up and interact in any way that makes sense to you. Next. Yeah, celebration. All right, so if you would like to speak, I'll just ask you to raise your hand. So um, if you have the old school Zoom, you would click participants and then a little panel will come up to raise your hand. If you are new school Zoom, then you just hit the reactions button and a little raise hand button will come up. If you wanna find and practice your raise hand button right now, go ahead and raise your hand and I won't call on you if you just wanna find where it is. Um, but later, if you call, if you raise your hand, we'll stop and we'll call on you. Next slide. All right, so today we're gonna generate and share some cool ideas for opening activities uh, that you can just do in the first five minutes of your tutoring session or your SI session or your peer uh, mentor session or even your classroom. Uh, we're gonna focus on those icebreakers that build a trusting, more uh, safer learning environment, create community in your space, prepare students to think about the learning that's ahead, or set expectations or agreements for the session. Next. So we all like to start with community agreements. It really helps us get our arms around what we're supposed to be doing and how we're gonna do it. So today is no exception. Um, so just here's kind of what you can expect from today. Do be ready to engage in some activities, some discussions and some video examples. So uh, we will have some group work today, but we also understand that some of you are multitasking and doing 25 different things all at once, and you may not be able to participate in a, in a breakout. So if that's you, we'll have a little trolley stop. So you can either tell me that you can't participate or you can log off, we'll have it towards the end. Um, but we do invite you to participate actively in the breakouts and the activities that we'll be doing. Um, if you've got questions, throw them in the chat. We love questions and don't wait for us to answer. Answer each other. We love the confusion. We love the questions. So help us out. And then just remember to be kind, right? I mean, this bears repeating and reminding. Uh, learning requires risk and that risk does require a certain level of trust and safety. And so establishing that trust and safety really does start with some basic kindness. So give people love in the chat, give people love in the reactions, let us know that you support each other. It really goes a long way in helping us get through any point in our life, but especially this pandemic. So please do feel free to interact in any way you see fit. We'll have activities, but you don't have to wait for an activity to bust out with your suggestion, your question, uh, or your comment. Please do use the, that chat and the reaction buttons to continue to interact. Next. So with no further ado, 
let's get started talking about opening activities. And just a couple of other pointers. You may have noticed that there's a, a She-Ra theme going on here. We all have watched and love She-Ra. We like, She-Ra is like a wonderful um, inspiration for all of us. So feel free to count all the She-Ra characters as we go on. We do have a potential special prize where if you get the number of She-Ra characters correct in this presentation, but they are everywhere. We even all have our own personal She-Ra avatars. We're a little extra about this. So you will see that throughout. So feel free to count those as we go along. It'll give you something a little extra to do as we're, as we're paying attention. So let's start talking about opening activities. How do you start the show? I wanted to start to talk about why we want to do opening activities. And I think this is an important thing to cover because we're all drowning in content that needs to be covered. And sometimes it can seem a little counterintuitive to take precious, precious minutes away from our content driven lesson plan to break some ice, right? Um, and I think that that's a fair concern and we're all under a lot of pressure. We also just want to point out that we know a lot more about how learning and brains work now than we knew, say, 20 years ago. And one of the things that we know about learning and brains is that learning requires a certain level of safety. You got to relax your brain, lower what we call affective filters to be able to take the risks necessary to learn. And for some people, we come into the classroom ready to learn, completely primed, completely safe feeling. But most of us don't. Uh, learning is not always a safe activity for everyone by default. How we relate to students, how we talk to students, how we treat each other in a learning environment, how welcome students feel, how scared or anxious or how capable students feel, how part of a community the students feel, it all makes a big difference in our ability to absorb that content. So if you really want your content to go a little bit further, just take a moment to create these spaces in our learning environments where we can lower those affective filters, relax the brain, create some safety, warm up the brain, get it ready for learning, and get us ready to take risks. And although I won't go over too much of the research today, um, I do recommend some wonderful resources at the bottom if you'd like to learn more about this. Um, they're at the bottom of the slide, Reading for Understanding, Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain, and What the Best College Teachers Do are three great resources if you wanna learn more about this stuff. Next slide. So now that we've talked about the why, let's talk about the what. What should a, an opening activity be like? Well, if our goal is to lower affective filters, get people to think about content and really help people build that community, then we think that it should first and foremost focus on the social dimension or community. How do we create those safer, more brave learning environments that'll allow us to take risks how do we build the connection that we now know is so important for learning? How do we create opportunities for our students to interact with each other and opportunities for them to interact with us? Uh, we're gonna think about how we're gonna behave in an environment pretty early on. So how do we establish those norms and expectations for learning early in your session? Um, how do we show people what's valued, whether or not you're allowed to ask questions, whether or not it's safe to make mistakes, whether or not it's safe to share your own ideas and strengths, a, an opening activity can do all of that. And also an opening activity is just a great way to build empathy, right? Connection and empathy, especially for that condition of vulnerability that's so necessary for learning, we really do well to take a moment to allow people to build connections, make those mistakes, be wrong, and learn. All right. So again, if you'd like to hear some more references, there's some other references there at the bottom that talk about the role of opening activities in this environment. Next slide. So let's talk about some examples. And this is where I need you, right? Because there are exactly one bajillion opening activities out there. So if you've got one that you like, find that chat and start typing in what your favorite opening activity is. We'll just scratch the surface a little bit today. Um, and then we will uh, try a couple of them. And then we'll actually have one of our community members, Mary Rangel, 
let's take the last half an hour between 4 and 4.30 to actually walk us through more, uh, a longer, more complete opening activities. So good opening activities should be done right early, right at the beginning, because we're going to decide how to act and how safe an, a learning environment is really within the first few seconds of our um, uh, uh, after exposure, but certainly within the first few minutes. So get it done right away. Make it meaningful. Don't just throw out a random icebreaker. Really think about what you want to achieve from your icebreaker and plan backwards from there. Keep it simple. You don't want it to last too long because that might feel like it's going to take away from the learning. Keep it short, low stakes, so people don't feel dumb right at the beginning. You don't want that. You want people to feel like they know things, right? And uh, make sure that it's there, that uh, it's a simple way to just sort of like build trust and confidence. And finally, make it engaging. Don't make it some pop quiz. That's not a fun way to start your session, right? Play games. Um, really just help people activate what they already know about the subject. Make it super easy so people will want to engage. And again, there's a lot of references there at the bottom. So go ahead, next slide. So here's some examples that we use a lot. And again, I see some people putting them in the chat. Tell me more about what you do. But here's just a couple of examples. Um, if you want to build some safety and community, why not just take a minute to introduce one another and talk about what they want to, what they want to learn or where they come from, right? Uh, you could create a Google Doc or a Google Slide to help people come together and share knowledge or you can decide on some community agreements or ground rules at the beginning. If you've got a group of people, it's really fun and easy to just put together a game like Mentimeter, Poll Everywhere, Kahoot, Quizlet, Zoom Poll. Those are really fun ways to get people's brains activated and we're actually gonna try a Zoom Poll next. If you're just in a one-to-one -one session with the student, great. But don't just jump right into content. Introduce yourself a little bit. That counts. That's an opener. That's an icebreaker. Talk about why you took the class, why you're there. Ask them about something that they're good at or something that they like in the class. Or Chafee College lent us this one. They do an activity called, what did you bring with you today? Where they just take a moment at the beginning of the tutoring session to ask the student, hey, what did you bring with you today that's going to help you learn? Or what did you bring with you today that's making it hard for you to learn? Show me, is it a textbook? Is it a pen? What is it, right? So lots and lots and lots of different ones. And um, I see some more come through the chat. Keep them going. We're gonna make a whole big list of them. And like I said, in that last half an hour between four and 4.30, if you wanna hang out, Mary Rangel's gonna walk us through a couple of her favorites. Next slide. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Grace, who's going to walk us through how to make a Zoom poll, and we're going to do one too. So Grace, take it away. All right. Thanks, Crystal. Hi, everybody. So um, a Zoom poll can be a really fun way to um, not only do an icebreaker with your students, but also you can use it as, you know, a way to get information like, you know, how many of your students need help with chapter four and how many need help with chapter five, things like that. But you can also have, you know, what's everyone's favorite ice cream flavor, dogs or cats, all of these different fun things that can, you know, lower that aff affective filter. And so um, we want to show you how to do that today. So you'll see Zoom polling on the toolbar on the bottom of your screen when you are the host or the co-host of a meeting. You won't see it now, most likely. But um, so creating a Zoom poll is really easy. And the cool thing about it is you can do it before your session starts so that you have it ready to go. And like Crystal was saying before, you don't waste any precious time that you have with your students. So when you click on the little polling icon on the toolbar, you'll see a window that looks like this come up and you'll click edit. And once you click that, it'll take you to a new window where you can see, um, let's go to the next slide. There's a, it's a little bit of a bigger thing. So you'll see, you can um, add a poll there and put the title and then type whatever question you want. And you can put several questions in, you, you can only put one question in, whatever works best for you in your session. And each time you wanna do another question, let's say you wanna have a five question Zoom poll, you can do add question. If you just want one question, Keep it simple. Um, and then you can save it later. And next slide. 
once you save it, you can have all of your different polls. So maybe you have your ice cream flavors poll, your dogs or cats poll, and your what do we want to learn today poll based on the size of your group or the certain students that are there. And then when you go to um, the poll icon on the bottom of your screen, you'll see all the polls that you have saved there and you can just pick which one you want, put it up for your students and everyone will see it. And that's a really great way to, um, it's very time efficient and it can be really, really fun. And at the end, you can show everybody um, their results. So we are going to do a Zoom poll with you all now. So I think it should be launching. Um, there are several questions on this one. So make sure you uh, scroll as you uh, answer. So go ahead and take a minute and do that. So yeah, that can be a really fun way to, um, you know, get some information from your students and, and can be a really fun opening activity. Next slide. Yeah, I see a lot of good stuff in this poll. So I see if you can not only get people to interact easily using something like this, but another thing, great thing about doing something like a Zoom poll is it gives you a great idea of what folks already know and then sort of like what you can work on. So for example, I'm looking at these results right here. And what I'm seeing is that 82% of you were introduce each other at the beginning of a session. That's beautiful, right? And then 53% uh, of us do a little check-in, right? Not very many people do things that aren't listed here or decide on community agreements, right? So that's great information for you as a facilitator as well. We also see that um, asking students about their day and introducing themselves and asking them to share information about themselves is really popular. And also a lot of us use Google Slides and Google Docs. So this is a great way to build community, help people understand more information about each other, and also helps you as the facilitator of education that day kind of get a great sense of what people know and don't know, right? So not very many people know Mentimeter or Word Cloud. So that's something that maybe you could work on and so on. Um, any questions on that? All right, beautiful. Let's keep, let's keep going. Thank you. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to Fatima. Yes. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about establishing norms and expectations from the beginning and what to expect when you're working with a peer educator online, not when you're pregnant or not. <laughs> That's the wrong session for that. All right. So these are some expectations to establish early. Um, one of them is technology. We have to realize that not everyone here is na um, digit uh, digital natives. Not, many, uh, not everyone knows how to use the platform. So it's very important to show how to use the platform and do things such as ask questions and interact, such as like what we did in the beginning. Another thing that's important to establish early is the role of the peer educator. So introduce yourself. Um, tell the student what you can and cannot do. You can teach them strategies to do well on the exam. You cannot give them answers to the exam, right? Another thing is goals and objectives of the session. So like the examples we showed before, these help set those goals and objectives for the session. So I encourage you guys to use all of those um, activities to help find those goals and objectives. Another thing is time limits and additional questions. For example, at the Center for Academic Success, we tell people that you have 30 minute per sessions because if there's a lot of students coming in, then it's 30 minutes per session. If we don't see a lot of traffic, then we can have a longer session. So it's important to establish that in the beginning so students aren't confused why a session is ending early or why they're, we were unable to answer all of their questions. Another thing to establish early is community agreements, which are explicit agreements for how the group will work together. Now, this differs from depending on subject, and I know there's are, there are subjects where it's important to establish them even more when you're using some sort of language and also so that can potentially be offensive and how to express your opinions in a kind and manner. And also establishable behaviors are acceptable and acceptable and desirable. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by um, creating a video and also give, showing examples of that. Another thing that what's important to do is describe what powerful learning looks like. Again, you can do that through video um, or just do a small example of that. 
Um, going back to behaviors, one of the things that we do at the Center for Academic Success is use the oops and ouch method. So the oops and ouch method is if you say something, again, we are all human, sometimes we say something that when we think about it later sound it quite mean and could have offended somebody, we can say oops. And that will be like um, a way to be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't really mean it that way. Um, and that's not what I meant. Um, and the ouch is like, if you hear somebody say something that may have hurt you or you felt like may have hurt others or may not be very kind, we say ouch. So that lets everyone know that, or that person know that they said something that wasn't very kind and that actually hurt somebody's feelings or your own feelings. So it just makes you more aware of you and others more aware of what you guys, are, what everyone's doing. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about norms and expectations um, in our next session. Um, and the best way to show norms and expectations is through example. So we have a five minute video example of a peer educator setting expectations and community agreements in a tutoring session. So as you watch this video, we encourage you to think about it and take notes on the following. So what moves does Lindsay make? What strategies do they use? And what strategies of your own does this make you think of? And what questions do you still have? And do you see anything you would like to try? So after the video, we're gonna go into small groups. We're gonna talk about what you notice, what do you currently do in your session, some things you would like to try. And don't forget to use those reaction buttons on the bottom on your toolbar as you watch. Um, and this is our first stop, letting you know that there is gonna be group work from here on out. So if you wanna leave, feel free to do so. We won't call you out, we won't make fun of you. We still love you. Um, there's no judgment in this session. So if you would like to leave, you may feel free to go right now or after the video. If you want to stay, we will happily have you and have some group discussions. And we also have Crystal's email listed here. If you have any further questions, we will be emailing this PowerPoint after the session is over. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, so we'll be showing a video and then we are going to be doing group work. So if you're cooking, taking care of children in another meeting and checking emails and doing this workshop all at the same time. Again, we do not judge you. I do the same thing and it's hard. So if you need to step out after the video, we totally get it. Or if you want to just hang out and not be put in a group, you can tell me in the chat and then I'll make sure not to put you in a group as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to take a look at a video that one of our tutors put together on the first five minutes of their tutoring session and you'll see how they established those norms, established safety and so on just in those first few minutes of the tutoring session. So as, you, as we go along, do feel free to use the chats and use the reactions. All right, and away we go. Hi everyone, welcome to Philosophy Night Tutoring. Um, welcome to the team, my name is Lindsay. And you probably already see me talking, um, but you may not be able to hear me. So I want you to go to the bottom left-hand part of your screen and join the audio. It looks like a little headset. Um, and this little um, pop-up bubble will show up. So click join the audio or if you here. Um, so a little bit about who I am. I am a former peer student and I actually took this very class myself. Um, and I was uh, successful and I took other classes and I'm now attending CSUN and going into a grad program. So you might wonder, why are you still here? Um, well, I'm still cheering this subject because I love it and there are so many things about it that made my life better. And I wanna share those skills and that um, benefit with you all. Um, so I'm still here tutoring. And because I took this class uh, myself, I have been working with your professor and know exactly what's going on um, I'm in your canvas shell and so on. So I can help you um, with a little bit more uh, specificity. I know it's exactly what's going on and how to help you. Um, so a few goals for today, we're gonna focus on discussing at least two strategies for beginning a proof. We're gonna focus on trying to complete at least one whole proof on our own um, with those correct citations and lines. And also describe what happens when we get stuck, because um, these are some of the common uh, troubles that we have when we're doing proofs. Um, so how this is gonna work, hopefully you've joined audio now, you'll notice that everyone is muted. Um, so no one can talk right now except for me, but that doesn't mean I don't want you to participate. This is entirely collaborative. So we're gonna focus on participation in three ways. We're gonna type in the chat, 
you can unmute yourself and speak verbally like I am, and you can raise your hand so it, it garners my attention, and then I'll unmute you or we can focus on, on your contribution in the chat. Um, so in the chat, um, I want you to find it down in the center area, there is a chat button. Um, it looks like a little text message bubble. And when you open the chat, it'll kind of look like this. It'll say Zoom group chat. And I want you to spend two seconds introducing yourself. Just type in your name and your professor. So I typed in an example, Lindsay Lazo, Professor Mia Wood. Um, so go ahead and do that. I also want you to know how to unmute yourself when you're sharing. So again, down in the bottom, we have the microphone. Um, mute will have a little slash in it. And then to unmute yourself, you will no longer have the splash. So you'll be able to speak just like me. Um, and then lastly, also down here is a participants button. And when you click it, there will be a raise hand sign. And you'll go ahead and click that and it'll raise your hand and get my attention. And we'll be able to, again, focus on your contribution in the chat or um, unmute you. So a little bit about how this is gonna work today. We want you to get out those notes, those textbooks, the material, um, and we want you to be able to have everything in front of you so that you can tell us exactly what proof exercise and page number we're going to be looking at. Now, because I'm a tutor, I wanna focus on the process. We're not gonna go straight into what the answer is for all of these proofs. We're gonna focus on how we can get to that answer and I'll guide you with questions to get there. But because we have a few people here, we are going to take turns so everyone will have equal time um, to ask their questions and participate. And that means that not all, and all questions will be answered. So we may not finish your homework right now, but you'll have all the tools in your tool belt to finish it, continue working it on it um, on your own. And with that, of course, I'm gonna say confusion is super cool. I believe in confusion. It helps us to learn and asking any and all questions is entirely encouraged. So please ask them whether they're right or wrong or they seem stupid, everyone can benefit from them. And lastly, because we are a team, we're gonna be working together. And I really uh, encourage you all to be kind to one another. We're all students. We don't really know what's going on, um, you know, and so, we are going to kind of work together and uh, figure this stuff out. So are there any questions about what we're going to do today? All right, so there you go. Very, a little bit of a different approach. Um, so instead of just doing a Zoom, um, so Lindsay chose to, um, to instead just talk a little bit about some of those norms and expectations and, and, and what uh, they needed from the community and how the community would interact. So, so far, you've seen some examples of some icebreakers. You've, we've played one icebreaker game. You saw how one tutor establishes norms and expectations. So the next step is we're going to build some breakout rooms. So um, again, if you need to, if you can't be in that breakout room or you can't hang out, we completely understand. Please do feel free to let me know in the chat that you can't be in a breakout room or if you need to shove off. Again, we still love you. Um, we just wanna make sure that the breakout rooms are powerful and we don't leave anybody alone in their breakout room. So um, before we go into the breakout rooms, we're gonna show you a little activity, another activity um, that you're going to do in the breakout rooms that'll help us all come together as a group and leave this breakout session with a nice, big, robust list of um, warm-up activities. So Grace, would you like to show us what it is that we'll be doing? Yes. So we are going to uh, use a Google Doc that um, is going to be in the chat in just a second. And we will, so it's called a give one, get one. Um, so in your groups, uh, you feel free to discuss, you know, some of the strategies that you just saw Lindsay use. We can discuss strategies that have come up either in the chat or here in our session together. And um, so we're going to do a give one, get one. So you'll see on one side of this Google Doc, it says get one. And the other side, it says give one. So on the give one side, that's the right side there, you can put 
a, um, an activity, a strategy, an icebreaker game, whatever it might be that you love to use, that you consistently use in your practice and you'd love for everyone to know about. And then on the get one side, chances are in your breakout room with all these wonderful people here, you're gonna learn something new, you're gonna get a new idea for a new strategy. You can put that in the get one side and then you'll have this nice um, list of all these new things to, to uh, take with you as you continue your semester and use that. So do we have any questions about that before we put folks into breakout rooms? You can raise your hand to ask them, you can ask them in the chat. All right, so I'm um, looking at the time. It does look like we'll have our full 12 minutes. So we'll have 12 to 14 minutes in these breakout rooms. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll have this beautiful list that we can all share with each other. So we're really excited to see um, what, what you're doing in there as well. So, um, all right, so there's a couple of you who have told me not to put you in a breakout room. I'm putting you all in a special breakout room. So just don't accept it and you will, and then that way we'll, We'll make sure that you uh, that everybody gets a, a large enough breakout room, but nobody has to go into a breakout room if they don't want to. All right, so I'm opening them up now. Go ahead and accept them, and I'll set my timer, and I'll see you back here in 12 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed your breakout room. I certainly enjoyed mine. Um, so it looks from this list like we've all learned some wonderful things from one another. And thank you um, for to everyone for your ideas. And um, so yeah, if your group had something that was especially awesome, so awesome in fact that you think the whole group needs to know about it, we would love to have you share out. Um, so you can share out in, in two ways. The first is finding um, that raise hand button either in participants or in reactions and just raise your hand and we can call on you if you'd like to share out verbally. And if you are not comfortable sharing out verbally or your mic's not working, um, you can just share out in the chat and we can surface that um, out loud. Either Crystal or myself can do that. So go ahead and start raising those hands. We'll have room for just a couple or time, sorry, not room for just a couple of comments. So, um, and, and if, I, love. If, I, if I may, Grace, I would love yeah. as folks are still kind of building up their bravery and deciding whether or not they should put that hand up. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you're anything like me, uh, you're, you take notes before you raise your hand. Well, folks are getting their thoughts together. I would love to invite some folks who wrote some of these things down that are just completely baffling to me. <laughs> so can I ask the person who said uh, kinesthetic day, would you mind unmuting yourself and telling us what that means? That sounds really cool and challenging in a Zoom session. Who did that? That was me. Oh, tell us about that. <laughs> um, that's funny because the people in my group are like, can you share that please? I was like, okay. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I'm an SI leader for uh, Riverside City College, and what I do, especially now since everything's been online, is uh, start off with a Zoom poll, uh, like we did at the previous, before, at the beginning of the session, um, and ask them what type of learner they are. So uh, most of the time, most people don't even know that, uh, if you're a kinesthetic, auditory, uh, visual learner, so we ask all those questions, right? And then once I do, I do that to take kind of a survey of my students to see where their learning style is. So if I have a lot of kinesthetic learners or auditory learners, I'll make a day to where our icebreakers are dedicated to them. So one of those days is kinesthetic day and I'll ask them what's in your hands. So I'll say, hey, what is in your hands? A lot of times people like to play with stuff or touch things or, um, yeah, or do a little squeegee ball or whatever. Like right now I have this clay in my hand. <laughs> this is literally made for crystal. Like, yeah. she has like her language right now. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, it's really cool to see, like ask them those questions and to go around the room and see what they have. And some people pull out, like I was telling them, like some people have like ice in their cup that they're like shaking because it's like a sensory thing. But at the same time, you're hearing it. Um, They have slinky that they play with. I had a, a guy that was doing hacky sack the whole time and it was like the balls like flying everywhere.
everywhere, but he was like engaged and like playing in the in the session. So yeah, that's what that's what that is. God. And can I also say coloring books? I brought my Shiva coloring book with me today. Yeah, also. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's great. That's awesome to surface that. And I love how that normalizes, um, you know, this notion that we should be doing something in order to pay attention, right? Because there's so much focus right now and like turn on your camera and look at the camera. And it's just really wonderful to just normalize that maybe that's not how you learn. Maybe you need to be playing with your thinking slinky, right? <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Right, absolutely. Thank you. And again, we do invite folks to raise their hands and share out anything that you heard in your session. And while you're thinking about it, I would love it if the person who said Powerball lottery would speak up and tell us what that's all about. That also sounds really fascinating. Well, I wrote that in there, but I'm going to credit that one to Luis, uh, who was in my group. Um, so um, Luis, if there's anything, please add. Uh, it's basically, it's, you know, if, if you won the Powerball lottery, what would you do with the money that you, that you oh. want? Awesome. Now, has that ever gone to a place that you didn't intend it to go? Or is uh, that if anything, I've learned that a lot of our staff want to open animal sanctuaries. That's what they want to do with their money, their winnings. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a great way to learn about what people are like and what they value. Is there, are there other lessons that you've learned in doing that activity, like things that people really like or something that you've learned about your colleagues other than they're all animal lovers? Most... And the last couple of times has been animal lovers. There have been some entertaining ones where they'll buy a private island and call it a day at that. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Luis. I appreciate that. Um, would anybody else like to share something that they learned today from one of their colleagues or something that they'd like to try going forward? No worries. So um, let's just go ahead and go to the next slide and we're going to tell you about what comes next. So thank you all so much for participating um, in these um, in these activities and um, in these discussions, it really means a lot to us and it helps us break the ice as well. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about what's coming next. So um, we understand that some of you need to go. So um, if you need to go, that's fine, go. We understand, we all have all the love for you. Uh, we'll be back next week to dig a little bit more deeply into norms and expectations. And we'll also talk about oops and ouch a little bit more deeply. So if you'd like to come back, we'll be here all the way through spring break. There is no spring break for 3CSN. So I know y'all have different spring breaks. So um, do feel free to come back all Fridays where we won't be taking any time off for spring break. So do feel free to join us any Friday at 3 p.m. But also check out the 3CSN website because there's other cool stuff that's going on during the week, including civic engagement, great ways, um, activities for grading and stuff you can do in your classrooms. There's great work on equity. So um, if you are looking for other cool things to go to, in addition to us, go to 3CSN.org. Um, and check out the full menu of um, activities that we have there for you. Um, and um, if you'd like to stay today, we're actually going to dig into a few more opening activities. Like I said, um, when we started, Mary Rangel from Mount San Jacinto College has prepared a couple of her favorite icebreakers to show us. So if you'd like to stay and learn a couple of more, uh, we're, we always try to do some sort of activity lab from four to 4.30. So if you would like to hang out, we would love to have you, but we do understand that some of you need to go. Um, if you are gonna go, um, Jan is going to put um, a link in, oh, she did, she put a little link in the, uh, the chat. That's to a feedback survey. We would love, love, love to have your feedback. Uh, we really are trying hard to build a community for peer educators and faculty members and uh, staff members and administrators, any professionals who are associated with peer education. Um, and so we need the community's feedback to do that. We need your feedback on what we can do we also are kind of interested in what you can do. So slowly but surely, we're getting to the point where we will put out a call for proposals. So in the fall, if you'd like to do one of these, we would love to have you do one of these as well. So do give us a little feedback. If you have questions or you have a great idea that you'd like to um, show us in the fall, um, do, e uh, do email me. I'm crystal at 3CSN.org, and I would love to talk to you about that as well. And of course, if you counted those Shira characters, you can tell us 
how many she characters you thought you saw. <laughs> and we do have some stickers for anybody who gets the right number. Go ahead, Anna. Were there eight? Oh, no. There's no. And there are more, but you know what? It might be the case that we just didn't show a couple of those slides. So there might actually have been eight, Anna. This is a whole nother level of uncertainty. Any other guesses? You can put it in the chat too. 16. That's just a guess. <laughs> well, that is actually the correct number. That's what we ah. <laughs> is Wait, That was just a random guess, Cushy? Oh, no, no, no. I counted it, but I, okay, I okay. thought I missed some slides, but. I just thought you were like, like a secret genius. Right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> At first, you know, I was confused about, you know, usually people do like even numbers or like odd numbers. I was like, I think it's 15. No, you know what? I'll just go with 16. <laughs> no, that's right. There were 16, but I think Anna and Kush, you have both won. So I'll be emailing you an opportunity to send you some stickers. So thank you very much for playing. I appreciate you. Um, do let me know if you have any questions. At this point, um, I'm going to um, turn this party over to to Mary Rangel. Next slide. Um, so um, I'd like to introduce Mary Rangel, Mount San Jacinto College, the great breaker of ice. She's going to walk us through a few of her favorite icebreakers, but if you do need to leave us, we completely understand. Thank you all so much for coming, and we hope to see you back next week.